Hello, it's been a little while. I've been out shooting my gear instead of talking about gear on the internet. But with the recent announcement of the Nikon Z8 and Nikon talking about how they're going to have better autofocus, I wanted to share my thoughts about how I hope that's true, but I'm a little skeptical. Right now, I put cameras into two categories. There are those that have autofocus, subject tracking, eye detect, whatever that works for wildlife and those that don't. And make no mistake, the Z9 is definitely in the category of those that do and those that work. And it's currently the only Nikon that is in that category. And I would say that the Z8, it's, you know, of course it's going to be the same. The question is, we'll see if Nikon can step it up because I think the video here I'm going to show you is going to demonstrate some issues that I've had with the Z9. This is on the most recent firmware. Uh, some of these are problems that people have talked about before, but they're kind of annoying, especially I used to shoot Canon. I've got a lot of friends shooting the new Canons, the R8, uh, the R10 even. Um, and, and it's funny to see these super cheap cameras just more reliable in picking up subjects. Um, in general, I've been shooting this camera for six weeks. I would say today's the first day that something's pissed me off with the autofocus. Um, I was able to end up getting what I needed, but I, I did lose footage from a really cool interaction, um, and that's frustrating. So without any further ado, we're going to jump in, uh, and I'm just going to show you. We are going to keep this one, you know, hopefully under 10 minutes today. Um, I recorded a lot of EVF footage, so I just want to show you guys what I was seeing and a couple things you can do about it. So we'll hop over in three, two, one, and here is DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so here's the otter. This was not a find I expected to see while out in miserable weather today. But I definitely didn't expect to see the autofocus just pulsing on this guy. Now, um, you know, I, I'm not sure what the issue was there, but it was just kind of jumping for no reason. You see the same thing here with this Purple Martin the other day. The autofocus just doesn't seem to pick up the subject and it's focused on the birdhouse. Um, in general, it doesn't pulse, which is nice, but sometimes it just can't pick things up. If you look at the top of the screen, you'll see here I'm using the full screen capture. I rarely do that, but I wanted to try and see here, can it pick up these birds? So we've got a couple of gold finch, uh, it's a purple finch female, I'm told, and uh, looks like a f maybe a female gold finch. Maybe that's a male. I'm, I'm bad with my IDs on birds. But you can see, I mean, it's trying, it's, it's seeing something, um, but it's just really struggling to get it. So here again, look up at the top, I've got a small single point and now I've moved to a wide box. I'm using subject detect on both, didn't get the bird. No chance here with the chickadee. Um, that was on the full screen grab uh, the, for autofocus, but even on the smaller ones, it's not working. Again, wide, large tracking here. It can't find the bird. It can't see the bird back behind. I had to focus on the tree branch or on the fence post there to get it. Looks like a northern flicker back there maybe or a dove. Can't tell from the butt, but the camera can't tell either. So even here, I mean, I've got a box with subject detect placed right on it and it can't tell that that's a bird. And that's kind of frustrating as you saw with the chickadee. Yes, I think people talk about the Nikon having different modes and you have to use the right mode for the right situation. But what's frustrating is that's not how Canon and to an extent Sony works. Now here you can see the full screen autofocus picked that sparrow up no problem on that branch. Uh, and I think I, it might have done it again. Yeah, he goes back. Oh, no, here's the other problem. So this is where you get into the mirrorless issue where all of a sudden, even though the bird was isolated, it can't find anything and now it's trying to focus on the back. Now I do some troubleshooting and I'll show you how to get around this in a minute. This isn't even my big issue. This has happened since day one, but it's more on the tracking. So here again, we're using the whole screen. And I want to say that I don't normally shoot this way. I wanted to test this because Canon does this amazing. You don't have to try to put a box on the subject and hope it finds it. But I wanted to show you both examples that even when you do put a box on the subject, it often really struggles and you've really got to go into single point and tell it where to look. Um, now, when it works, it does a good job. Like here, it's, you know, it's finding the bird and holding on, but you can still see it's drifting, it's drifting to the butt, it's drifting to the head. Um, so it's really not glued to the eye. And I don't know what more you need. This is a bird, a big bird, close, you know, fill, excuse me, filling a good chunk of the frame. Now it went to the background and it's struggling. Now it's grabbing the foreground. It's just really having a hard time finding the bird. This blue jay is a good example. So it's kind of, you know, kind of getting them here in the grass, again, bouncing around, up into the tree, no chance. And if you notice, I am flicking between modes here. I was not using the, the be-all 
the full screen autofocus. I was using uh, a tight box. Here again, trying to use the full. Now it does get them isolated on the branch. So, you know, it's doing an okay job getting a, a picture of the eye here. Uh, but again, it's not as fast and sticky uh, even as the cheap Canon R10. Um, so that's a little crazy. One of my best friends is shooting an R10, um, you know, and we've gone out multiple times together. And uh, he just switched over to an R8. But I, I mean, you know, just go watch Jared Poland's reviews of the R8 if you want to hear how great it is. And seeing it in person, um, yeah, definitely like it rock and rolls. So. I, again, the Z9, I'm not going to say you can't get shots with it. I have no interest in getting rid of the camera. I love the sensor. I'm loving this lens. Um, you know, it's it's a great combination, and I love the video capabilities. But, you know, Nikon still has a way to go on their autofocus. If, if this is all you've got, this shouldn't be a reason why you're having, you know, why you're going out into the field and not getting photographs. But... When you're seeing Canon do this for a fraction of the price, that's, you know, something you've got to think about. So same here on this Dove. Like, again, you can see it's just not sticking. Now, I wanted to test what happens when you shoot the background here. And essentially what you've got to do is you've got to try to help it out with single point. So if you go to the background, so I'm intentionally trying to focus there. And I'll show you the settings here. You go into the controls custom control shooting, and then you can program these function buttons. Now I have these set up the way Steve Perry sets them up. I bought his uh, setup guide. Um, I guess my issue with that is I've got short fingers and it's got a deep grip. So I'm really struggling to grab those front buttons to turn on 3D or spot focus to give it a help. So I've actually changed it. I didn't show in this video, but I'm using the display button right beside the autofocus on the back. Uh, Steve Perry set his up to be subject detect on and off. I haven't really found a lot of needs to turn off subject detect. Uh, even when I turn it off, I'm finding the camera still not finding something if it's struggling. So I'm just using the display button as a single point. And you can kind of see how I'm using it here. So we can't find the bird, but then I hit it with single point. There, it was still struggling. Uh, but it finally, it got back on it. And then I can go back to using like the normal whole screen eye detect. Um, I have found in general the 3D tracking. You'll notice I'm not really using it much. Uh, the 3D tracking, I think, is something that, you know, works better when the animal is moving around. Um, it does a good job. I, I do like the 3D tracking a lot. But for the most part, I like to shoot uh, portraits and stationary animals. So it, when I am shooting something that's moving around, I will use that. Um, but you also, you don't really need to use it. If you just use like a, a wide box with subject detect, you're typically, as the animal's moving, you're moving too. And you're probably keeping your viewfinder and all that on the animal. So I haven't found a ton of use cases where I need to use 3D tracking. I'm sure it's different in sports or something like that. Um, but it is, you know, you saw, I think it was, um, I think Scott Keyes and Ray Hennessy both had videos uh, I believe early on in the Z9 talking about how it really struggled like shooting songbirds um, as you're seeing here it doesn't want to grab that foreground and stuff like that um, or, or if it grabs the background it's struggling to come back so um, I mean I think that's an easy problem to fix you just have to know that if the camera is going to struggle and it misses don't don't waste 10 seconds waiting for it to get back on track just just hit a spot focus so I think if you have ways to get around it then it's not the end of the world but, you know, we'll see. I would love to see Nikon make some advancements here at their autofocus system. And I do believe if they do that, it will trickle down into the Z9. But, um, yeah, you know, a $1,000 Canon R10 absolutely, without question, has better autofocus than a Z9. So, you know, does a Z9 have better autofocus than every other Nikon? Definitely. Um, but in the realm of tracking cameras, it's at the bottom. And... You know, I, I've used a lot of different cameras. It's definitely, I would say, behind something like the R5, um, the Fuji. I, I mean, I guess it's probably ahead of the Fuji. Once it locks on and such, I think it's ahead of there. Um, but I also, you know, everybody who complained about the Fuji's autofocus, I was not one of those people. If you watched all my videos, I think the Fuji autofocus is really good. Uh, I didn't switch because of autofocus problems. I just wanted full frame and lens selection. So... Um, I, but I would say, you know, if I compare something like the Olympus EM1X that I was shooting, it said it had bird detect. It never worked at all. It was totally broken. If it worked and got you a sharp shot of a perch bird, it was a fluke. So 
you know, totally laughable for them to claim they have that. As you can see in the video, the Z9 works more often than it doesn't work. Like most of the time it works, but it is dropping in weird cases where Canon's algorithm is not dropping at all. Uh, I don't have enough Sony experience to compare it there, but from what I've heard and seen, it's probably similar. So I, that's not to say you shouldn't buy a Z9 or you shouldn't buy a Z8. I just think, you know, you have to ask yourself, where are you and, and what kind of setup are you looking to get? Um, what Canon does really nice is you don't need to be switching. Like you saw through this whole video, I was switching between different autofocus cases. And in the real world, I do that a lot. I'll switch beside uh, between a long, big, wide box to keep the subject and then a small box, hopefully kind of getting through branches and kind of keeping it on the eye. But you can see in some of these cases, it just didn't work at all. So that's kind of frustrating. So any questions, uh, post them below. These negative videos tend to get way more action than the positive ones. But we'll have lots of positive ones coming. I love this camera. I plan to have it for a very, very long time. But um, yeah, today sometimes it just makes you really go, huh, when the autofocus isn't working. So we'll see what the Z8 rumors come out in a week and we'll talk soon.